Hi everyone, my name is Safi Sprocket and welcome back to the channel. You may have noticed I am in a new location, which is very exciting. I have recently moved house. I left my city apartment and I have moved into a regular person house, complete with what looks like the world's very saddest garage. But more importantly, it's a garage. So I am so incredibly excited because as you can imagine, we are going to be doing a DIY project. I know a lot of you have been begging me to do more DIY videos because apparently they're very funny. I don't really remember them being funny. They remember them being quite painful, but apparently you guys love them. And originally I was just gonna get someone to do this for me, but then I thought, you know what? If you guys really enjoy seeing me suffer, then sure, we'll give it a go. So this is where we are. Now, this is possibly the world's smallest garage imaginable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom the camera out in a few seconds and I'm just gonna kind of give you some perspective of how small it is. I'm currently leaning on my motorcycle. I could probably fit at a push two free bikes in here wall to wall without any movement. Um, and I think maybe realistically, I'll have room for another bike once I get it all done. Um, but there's not a lot of room, there's not a lot of room, but I think that's fine. It's gonna be fine. It's my first ever garage, so I'm super excited. But yeah, oh, I'll let, let's take a little look around and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what I'm planning to do. So. <laughs> but yeah, let's get started. So here we go. This is my new YouTube space and it's looking a little worse for wear. I think we can all agree it doesn't look fantastic. I've got some old furniture left over from moving in that I need to clear out. I've got some old coffee tables. I've got my old TV and uh, a desk chair, which has since gone moldy, but it's good. This is my first ever garage and I'm so <laughs> excited to get going. The width of it isn't particularly big. I think at a push, I could probably get three motorcycles in side by side. I could probably touch Okay, so the width is one sprocket, and then I think like the length this way, we're looking at about three sprockets. <laughs> so it's good enough for me, you know, to store bikes and stuff, but I think we're working with very limited space here. It's incredibly limited space, and it's gonna have to require a bit of creativity to bring it up to scratch in order for it to be the perfect place to work on bikes. So the first thing that we're gonna to have to do is take absolutely everything out of here in order to begin the prep, which is an absolute nightmare because I'm gonna to have to take all the luggage off my bike so I can wheel my bike out. I'm gonna to have to take all of this stuff, um, including my electric scooter, and then we'll have to you know, take all of the stuff off the shelves and basically we're gonna get everything out of here. I want it as empty as possible so that we can begin the prep. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky and get some friends to help us. <laughs> because everything's, I don't want to do this by myself. There's a lot of stuff to carry. And uh, so yeah, let's go find someone to give me a hand. <laughs> but then we can begin the prep, which is super exciting. So.
Okay, so the garage is now completely clear. We've taken absolutely everything out. It took me about half an hour just to get everything out. It wasn't too bad because obviously I had some friends helping me who stood by the garage door and basically picked up everything and transported it inside my house. So I didn't have to worry too much about doing all the heavy graft, but more importantly, it's completely clear. So we now have our base to start prepping. I'm so incredibly excited. So the next step is we are gonna get some sandpaper and we're gonna go over the walls. It's just gonna be a quick rough sanding. Now, the reason I'm gonna be sanding the walls um, and I'm not gonna be doing it too much, but the reason that I'm gonna be doing it is just because it is chipboard on the walls and when you run your hands along the walls, there are some various loose chunks and sharp bits. And if you've been following this channel for some time, you'll know that I am the clumsiest person in the world. And I have no doubt in my mind that at some point I'm going to be walking into these walls. So we're just going to be doing some rough sanding all around just to get rid of those so that when that does inevitably happen, I don't have to go to A&E. <laughs> but more importantly, sanding is very, very dangerous work. So... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't even know if I need this, but I'm gonna wear it anyway, because this is... <laughs> I feel so cool right now. <laughs> Now, before we go and jump straight into sanding the walls, I do have just two more tasks. So task number one is the shelving needs to come down. So I'm gonna go get the impact drive thing, majiggity, the zumadi zumadi, to remove that. <laughs> what, impact screwdriver? Is it just an impact driver? What's it called, what are they called? Electric, zumadi zumadi things. Electric, electric screwdriver? Ele the, it's an impact one that will remove them. So I'm gonna go use that and I'm gonna use it to take the shelving down. Okay, that is not the tool for, oh. <laughs> okay, this isn't the tool for the job. I'm gonna go get a um, hand screwed.
So I purchased the cheapest sandpaper I could find in the store and I also purchased the cheapest sanding blocks I could find in the store as well because I'll be honest I'm not that particularly fussed um, and I was just trying to save money as much as possible. Where does this open? Oh, is this it? How do I... ever was the sandpaper, because it is just... Ah, oh, it's so awful. It's just so awful. It was actually easier than I expected. So the next step is we are basically just going to be throwing some paint on the walls to kind of spruce them up, make them look a little bit tidier and I really wanted to kind of push through and get the first coat of paint on because then I can leave it drying overnight even though that little tiny voice inside my head is like go to sleep but no we're going to carry on going. So paint, <laughs> do not judge me, do not judge me but I went to the shop. Oh my god, it's so heavy. I went to the shop and um, I bought some paint, like five litres <laughs> of like generic white paint, which means one thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I was looking at paintbrushes for painting the walls, I was also looking at the price of paintbrushes and it, they were quite expensive. I was actually really surprised at how expensive these paintbrushes were. And I sat and thought about it and I thought, this isn't probably going to be something I do on the regular. So it doesn't really make sense for me to like spend a lot of money on paintbrushes when this is probably going to be the only DIY project I do on YouTube unless I you know do another garage project in the future but like that's not going to be anytime soon so I didn't really see the point in buying or spending money on paintbrushes <laughs> don't judge me but I did one of those like uh, I bought one of those like bumper starter packs <laughs> because I was just like well I can just throw them away afterwards and I don't have to keep them but and it literally had everything in but like when I looked at like buying these paintbrushes by themselves, they were like £10, like a brush. And these are the same brushes as well, I think. And then the pack was like 20 and I was like, well, basic economics. I don't really need to use them again. And here they are, value bumper pack. <laughs> so yeah, this is what we're going to be painting them <laughs> It's Friday night, by the way, it's Friday night. <laughs>
Okay, so I have officially finished painting for the evening. I've put two coats of paint on the walls and I'm just gonna leave it to dry overnight. I'm gonna come back and do a third coat tomorrow and I am gonna spruce it up a little bit. I'm probably not gonna film that part though. There's only so much filming montage you can watch until you get fed up. Now the plan going forward, I don't know if you noticed while I was painting, I wasn't particularly careful with the wiring or the plugs because ultimately I don't care, it's all gonna come off. The wiring in the garage, it's not the worst thing in the world, but considering the fact that this is gonna be a working garage and it's gonna be a working studio, they need to be switched up a lot because my power consumption is gonna be a lot higher than the average consumer, especially powering lights, it's not a cheap thing to do. So the plan is, the plan is, at the moment we have um, a fuse box in the garage and it's running two circuits. And on the first circuit we have the internal lighting and the external lighting. And then on the second circuit we have a plug socket plugged into that. Now from that plug socket we have two more plug sockets that have been daisy chained, one of which powers the external plug for the garden and the other one comes out over here. <laughs> so as you imagine we're taking all of that out, that's got to go. So um, you know we're going to have professional lighting, we're going to have tools that are on charge, we're going to have my bikes on trickle charge and you know there's going to be a lot of power consumption. So I need something that's a bit more fit for purpose and also you know obviously with studio lighting that we're going to eventually rig up uh, and all the film equipment and things like that. It's going to... We, we, it's going to have to go. It's going to have to be changed. So there we have it. That is the end of today's episode. Now, if you have any hints or tricks or tips for doing electric work or laying garage floor, please post it in the comments below. I've never done a project like this before. It's my first ever one. So I have a lot to learn and any information that you guys can give me is always well received. I do read every single comment in the comment section. So if you guys do post any advice, I will see it and I will read it and I will take it on board. And it is always very greatly appreciated because I need it. In the meantime, if you do want to see more great bike content, don't forget to hit subscribe. And in the meantime, I will see you next week. So ride safe and stay crazy. I'm Safi Sprocket. I'll see you later.